Hi everyone and welcome back to Chess for Charity. In this video, I'm going to show you an incredible puzzle. This is one you can put into Stockfish and it takes a very, very long time to find the answer. Sometimes it won't even find it. So it's white to move and win. On your screen, you'll see four options with different colors. Those are the four moves that are kind of the candidates. I'm going to let you think about what the first move might be. So take a second, think about it. You have the rook threatening or the king threatening the rook, the knight threatening the pawn, your pawn threatening the bishop, and this pawn threatening to take on g7. So take a second, think about the options, see if you can figure out what the best move is and why. There are so many amazing resources in this puzzle for both sides that like, if you're like me, you're going to laugh in this puzzle because there are so many insane lines. Okay, while you're thinking about that, let me quickly encourage you to subscribe if you have not yet already. Half of the income I earn in this channel goes directly to charity, so every like, every subscriber helps us out so much. Okay, let's start talking about the options here. So let's just go around the board. The first option, taking this rook. That's a losing move, and here's why. Maybe your thought was, I'm taking this thing, maybe I'll try to push this pawn soon, maybe take here, maybe take there. Good ideas, but unfortunately it doesn't work. After the bishop takes the pawn, sacking itself, you really don't have anything here. You can take, you don't take here if you're black, instead you take the free piece. So what are you gonna do now? You really don't have anything. You can take here, but it's all too slow. Plus these pawns are too fast. Okay, so if we just look at that first move, that is out. Let's rule out king takes rook. Okay, let's go to the knight. Maybe your idea was knight takes d7, and if they take, I can promote. I like the idea. However, this does not work for a couple of reasons. First, they don't have to take your knight. They can still sacrifice like we just talked about. And after this sequence, after you take here, king takes d7, and then what happens? Everything is kind of clarified. They have a rook, right? This is enough. So that doesn't work, but I really like one variation here. There's one variation that made me actually laugh out loud, which is, hey, if I do promote, I have a queen, right? I'm winning, right? Nope. They can play rook f1. Insane. You have to move your king to a light square, and after you do, they have this discovered, not discovered check, discovery on the queen, and check to your king. Isn't that incredible? So... Be careful with that. I really love that variation. That made me laugh. Okay, so we ruled out king takes rook, and we ruled out knight takes pawn. And I'm going a little bit fast here. There are so many variations. I don't want to make this a 45-minute video. So there are two more options left. There's taking, and there's taking. If you take the bishop, that's great. It's just simply not enough, right? If the idea is to take here, you're going to leave this hanging. There's nothing you can do. It's just too slow. So that is out. So what is the right move? Hopefully you got it. The only move here is pawn takes g7. And now let's dive into it. So if you're playing black, you have the rook threatened and the bishop threatened. What do you do? And your rook, by the way. What do you do here? There's only a couple moves that are sensible, and let's talk about them. Maybe one thought you have is, well, this is already under attack, and this is, so I can't really defend them both. Instead, I'll take right here. Good idea, but again, it doesn't work. If you promote this pawn by taking, then it will be a draw, but you don't take. Instead, you promote with check, and this is a win for white. They move, and just cutting out some of the details here, because they're it's just a variation, the idea is you're going to centralize your queen, try to give it up for two rooks, promote another pawn. You're completely winning as white. Okay. So, after you take here, they can't play rook takes h2. So what else really is there for them to do? They can't sacrifice their bishop like those other lines because I can play g takes h queen. And I'm, your rook is hanging and your bishop is hanging. So, white wins. So there's a really nice resource here. And if you want to take a second at this moment, what, what, is black, like what can black do? What is black in the position to do 
that they weren't able to do a few minutes ago. So this kind of is a hint. This H rook is a hint that we're opening something up. So this killer move, this amazing defensive move, is rook g2, giving the rook up on an open square. And I want to entertain the idea of taking it versus not taking it and just show the variations. Because like I said, this puzzle is insane. If you take the rook, then they sack their other rook. All of this is to do what? To liquidate everything. They take this, and now is another moment to pause and say, wait a second, what do I do in this position? Because even now, you can go wrong. If you take this bishop with your pawn, you lose the game. And here's why. King takes, knight takes, and guess what happens? B3. This pawn is too fast. And if you take it, what do they do? They push. They do not take. All right, some geometry here with the bishop and with the knight, I mean. If they move, you can't catch this. This can't catch this pawn. So crazy variations everywhere, but keep it in mind. So my point there was you can't take with the pawn. It'll be a loss. I showed how, but if you want to dive into it more, I would encourage you to dive into it more on your own. This is a variation like I just shared with b3. But if you chose to take, I showed what happens. But if you chose to push, I didn't show what happens. They play b2. You're too slow. Right? You're lost. Okay. So many variations. Too much fun. I don't even know how many variations there are in this puzzle. So instead of taking this like this, instead of taking here on f7, the best move is to play knight takes d7, the hope being, if black didn't play correctly, they take and you'd win. But, of course, if they made it this far, they see the best move. Best move is to take on a2. And this is going to be a draw. From here, knight c5, threatening this, they move. You can threaten this. There's a lot of ways to do it. They can play here because they can't leave this diagonal. Important note, you can't push this pawn or else you'll lose the game in case you didn't see that. So you have to give up this pawn. You move. It's a pretty simple draw from here out. Sacrifice, and this is a draw. All right, the king is just not fast enough. You can just do this. F5, yeah. Bishop A2. Move the king in, however you want to do it. Okay, you get the idea. So, what is the move? After this rook sacrifice, I just showed that if you take it, it's going to be a draw. But, you don't have to take it. So, you don't want to go here, right? If you go here, you lose the game on the spot. That would be embarrassing. Instead, you run away from the rook sack. You just say, I'm going to go here, which I'm going to put a brilliant move on. Because then to see all this is just absolutely bananas. So you say, I'm not taking your rook. And then they chase you down the board and say, hey, take it, take it. And you keep saying, no, I'm not taking it. Because, and again, if at any moment you do, just to make sure it's really clear, if you take it, this whole sequence that we just showed is completely true. Now it's even worse because you can't take the rook. So black would win. So what you do is you run down the board. King d1. They check you again. You run down the board. Now, what are we doing here? If at any point they bring the other rook in, remember, you promote. So they can't, they can't do that. So you keep running down the board, right? You just go all the way down. Okay, rook c1. Sorry, rook c2. You play king b1. They play rook b2. And you go all the way to the corner. Look at this. Look at this insane journey that the king has taken. Now, what's the point? They take it. Sure. And now you walk all the way back. Rook b1. They still want to give up their rook. And you walk all the way back. Now, why? What is the difference here? Now, remember, this is where I was before. G1. And now you play rook g2. Almost like the same position we were in a while ago. But now there's no pawn on a2. And now... And only now, this is insane, you can take this rook and get away with it. Why? 
with one fewer pawn on the board, you're now able to win. Isn't this crazy? Same sequence. They take, you take, they take. And what do you do? Now you can catch this pawn. So you can get away with taking this bishop. You take. They take. You take. Now it's a pawn race. Pick a pawn, any pawn. It doesn't matter which one you pick because you're going to win either way. Let's say you play a3. That looks like the right pawn to move, right? Then black can play, or sorry, white can play knight c5, holding this square, holding that square. See the geometry here? Importantly, see if you can use that visual mind here, the reason why this wouldn't work before is because there would be a pawn on this square, and you wouldn't be able to control b3 and then a1. That's the critical difference. Now, if you went b3 instead, now you have to play check, king can take, and then you play knight c4, and you're holding both of these squares. Isn't this absolutely crazy? This is a win now, right? Just in case it's not clear, the king can run in. You're good. Eventually, these pawns are going to have to move, and if not, you just move your king in and force everybody forward. Crazy. Okay. So that's kind of the answer to this whole puzzle, but I want to make sure it's really clear why it worked. So the whole idea, all the way back, the whole idea, going like 20 moves back, the whole idea is that this pawn was actually hurting you. Like I said, if you take and then you take, this pawn, after all of these sacrifices, right, you'd lose the game because they can play b3. After I take this, they play b3. And like I said, this pawn is now here, which means I can't control b3 and a1. Isn't that crazy? I really hope you enjoy this puzzle. I hope you got a lot out of it. This sacrifice of running like this, running around with the king, and then running all the way back, I don't know if you've ever seen something like that. I haven't. At least I can't remember if I have. Then you can take, and the whole sacrifice doesn't work. Look at that. Isn't that absolutely amazing? If you enjoyed it, let me know. This video was quite a lot to make because of all the variations. I had to do a lot of research on it. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, bye.